portion of the news brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. A former cabinet minister is calling for government to launch a probe into the financial state of affairs at the Bahamas Electricity Corporation, saying it might be shocked at the findings. Former works minister and a framer of the constitution, Loftus Roker, is concerned and says unless something is done soon, BC may find itself in the same state as the National Insurance Board. Mr. Roker sent this message to Prime Minister Perry Christie. Something is seriously wrong with BEC. And that he ought to appoint an independent group to find out what is wrong at BEC so that the Bahamian public, who after all owns BEC, would know what's going on. Are we employing people there? that we don't need, which eating up the cash of the corporation. That has happened before. Uh, is that what we're doing now? And if that's what we're doing, is that the best way to operate? Well, during a press conference today, Mr. Roker said he's not at all satisfied with the way the fiscal affairs are managed at the country's power company. The former minister also lashed down at the corporation's management team, saying, it lacks leadership. The people who now manage BC are weak. Now, but, Why but, do you say that? Because things are, I believe, things are happening at BC. That if they were not weak, would not be happening. Such what? Well, I don't, I don't want to go into that because I am saying if. If the Prime Minister want to, he could find out what that is. Now, in recent months, BC has implemented a number of measures to drive down costs for consumers and improve the corporation's financial position. In fact, BC's Chairman Leslie Miller says he's making headway with the corporation's overtime bill. He says the figure has been cut in half already and he's working on a further reduction. Senators met briefly this morning for a first reading of a bill to make Majority Rule Day a holiday. That piece of legislation got a stamp of approval in the lower house on Monday, and senators are expected to begin debate next Wednesday. Well, some board changes are being made by cable and wireless. The company has announced the appointments of Mr. Tony Rice as chairman of the board of the Bahamas Telecommunications Company Limited and Mr. Chris Daring as company director. Mr. Rice is the chief executive of CWC and Mr. Daring is a senior executive in cable and wireless's Caribbean business. They replaced David Shaw and Gerard Borley, who had served as members of the board over the last two years. The new appointments reflect the changes to the senior management structure of cable and wireless that were introduced this past February. The incoming BTC chairman thanked the former executives for their commitment and dedication in helping to lead what is being described as a very successful transition of BTC to a private company. The chairman says they will continue to work on transforming BTC to ensure that it remains the choice of Bahamian consumers. Well, the wait is finally over for fans of the BTC Star Maker Show, which premieres right here on ZNS tonight following our evening news broadcast. The reality TV show, now in its fourth season, has grown tremendously over the last few years, and company officials are proud of the new direction the show is taking. Season four is going to be exciting for us because actually for the first time we're going to have the participants live in a house together during the filming. So we, in addition to watching them do their uh, different uh, things that they have to do um, in order to win, they now actually get to live together and we're going to see how that dynamic plays out. Tonight's episode is really, really interesting because what we're doing is we're starting out by looking back. So for this premiere episode, we're taking a look back over the first three episodes three first three seasons of Star Maker and um, you get to see a lot of our funniest moments, our most touching moments and see some, un some footage that we haven't seen before. So it's going to be an interesting look back as we get ready to do our casting call episode um, next week, which is always the funniest episode in the, in the series. 16 people have been casted for this season with eight juniors and eight seniors from New Providence, Grand Bahama, Bimini and Abaco. From its inception, Mr. Johnson says the show has garnered loyal viewership but more than building on its brand, Mr. Johnson says the company is holding on to a greater mandate. The most interesting 
feedback I get, and the most rewarding feedback is when people just come to say to us, BGC, thank you. Thank you for doing something to showcase the best in our young people. And I think that's the enduring um, legacy of Star Maker. We've at least, at least internally within our company, been talking about how can we, is there any opportunity for us to export the Star Maker concept to some of the other CWC Lime territories. So the support has been fantastic and very well. We, one day we may see in a Star Maker, um, Jamaica Star Maker Barbados, and it'll be a Bahamian export that I think we all could be proud of. That was what all right, well, still to come, skippers preparing for the Long Island Regatta. And illegal immigrants apprehended on the Southern Island. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news was brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. This is your Royal Fidelity Business News. I'm LaDawn Davis. State Minister for Finance Michael Alkida is revealing that the government plans to officially unveil draft legislation to implement value-added tax system in place before January 2014. State Minister Alkida has hinted that the draft law might be ready as early as next week. Value-added tax is a tax on the sale of goods and services. Although the sales tax is only collected when a final sale to consumer occurs, the VAT is collected at every stage of the production and distribution chain. Rita Kaufman, Financial and Trade Officer, Ministry of Financial Services, and Mr. Michael Guy, Second Secretary, Embassy of the Bahamas, London, attended the 26th Geneva Week in Geneva, Switzerland. These special week-long events assemble World Trade Organization representatives and observer countries who do not have permanent missions in Geneva. The purpose is to inform non-resident member countries and observers about recent developments taking place at the WTO. The Bahamian representatives participated in consultation on outstanding matters that will assist the government in its accession to the World Trade Organization. And in international business news, Toyota's profit more than doubled in the three months to March as a weakening Japanese yen and improved sales boosted the car maker's comeback. Net income rose to 339.9 BN yen or $3.2 billion up for the same period the previous year. Toyota also forecast a profit for the next financial year. Japanese car makers, including Toyota, have seen a recovery after the 2011 tsunami and earthquake disaster disrupted supply chains and hurt production. And that's a look at your Royal Fidelity Business News. I'm LaDawn Davis. <laughs>